So, I will continue with Lie algebra and then Lie groups as a warm up of recapitulating whatever we were doing in the last lecture. So, Lie algebra is also vector space and the operation is going to be a commutator bracket operation which we call it as a Lie bracket and that vector space will have some basis states. Okay. So, if x and y belong to that vector space and the commutator of x and y is also in that vector space that is one of the properties and then linearity any scalars lambda and mu could be complex or real depending on that you will call this as real Lie algebra or complex Lie algebra. They will satisfy the commutator bracket or the Lie bracket will also satisfy this linearity property. And of course, the Lie bracket by definition if you interchange the two elements it is going to be negative of itself and the Jacobi identity is a cyclic property which is naturally obeyed. If you write it out expand it out explicitly you will see that every term will cancel with another term. So, that the right hand side will become 0. This you are all familiar in Poisson brackets in classical mechanics and uh, also the Lie algebra has this Jacobi identity property okay, the elements of the Lie algebra. If the Lie bracket is 0 for all the elements then you say that Lie algebra is abelian example was your translation group the Lie algebra was involving linear momentum and that was an abelian algebra. Okay. And then I went on to say that if you take any two elements this is the property 1 that it should give a linear combinations of the elements in that set. Because this is a commutator bracket which is anti symmetric you can show that when you interchange S and T this coefficient which is what we call it as a structure constant is going to pick up a negative. Okay it is anti symmetric in S and T indices. And Lie sub algebra is a subset of those elements in that Lie algebra just like we have studied Lie group subgroups of discrete groups you also have subgroups of Lie groups you also have sub algebras of Lie algebras and the definition is that that subset if you write the commutator bracket within that subset it will always belong to that set that subset. Okay. So, a Lie sub algebra H is a subset of elements of the Lie algebra such that elements form that those subset elements itself form a closed algebra by closed algebra I mean that subset elements will satisfy this property. Okay. So, then you call it as a Lie sub algebra is that clear? And then I went on to say that there is the sub algebra could be an invariant sub algebra. If you take any element outside that subset okay, and take the commutator with the subset elements which is a sub, sub algebra this commutator should get back to the sub algebra should be any element in that sub algebra. If that is happening then we say that the invariant uh, sorry the sub algebra is an invariant sub algebra. Okay. Is that clear? I did not add two more points today I tried to add that also and if the commutator if you expand it is right if you take a b So, this by the Lie algebra as I said I can write it as C the meaning is inbuilt that it is summation over T. Okay. But what you can see is this one you would have written it as a 
x t right. These two are equal. So, what does that show that c t a b is minus of c t b. So, this is anti symmetric in the two indices. Okay. So, structure constants this is structure constants are anti symmetric with respect to a comma b indices. Is that okay? Okay, so simple Lie algebra has trivial invariant subgroup is just an identity element or the whole group. Okay. You should have a non trivial invariant subalgebra. If you do not have a non trivial invariant subalgebra, then the Lie algebra is called as a simple Lie algebra. Whatever you are studying, an angular momentum algebra, rotation, algebra associated with the rotations, all of them are simple Lie algebras. You cannot find a subalgebra, you cannot find a invariant subalgebra, non trivial invariant subalgebra. Trivial is identity element and the whole set that is useless, you have to find something which is non trivial. Okay. So, in that sense all the Lie algebras which we are going to confine ourselves mostly here are simple Lie algebras. Then there is more variant if you find an invariant subalgebra you have to check whether that invariant subalgebra is an abelian subalgebra. Okay. So, if it does not have a non trivial abelian invariant subalgebra then the group the algebra is a semi simple algebra. Okay. So, these are some of the jargons which is which you will see in any books, but we are going to just confine to simple Lie algebras where there are no non trivial invariant sub algebras. Okay. And this I went through and some students said I went through very fast. So, I thought let me just take you again through this because this is a concept which if you are the first time learners then it is nicer to get it understood. Okay. So, typically when you write 2 cross 2 you know invertible matrices, what do I mean by invertible matrices whose inverse exists right. Otherwise if you do not have an inverse existing then you, you are getting into problems clear. So, so, take a set of two dimensional complex vector space and let the linear operators acting on those spaces are 2 cross 2 matrices. This is not new, I have taught you in discrete groups that depends on the dimension of the vector space, then you have operators whose matrix representations will be 2 cross 2 if it is a two dimensional representation. Okay. So, the Lie algebra is formally it will have four elements and the four elements can be complex. So, G L 2 C denotes 2 cross 2 matrix with complex entries. Okay. In order to generate an arbitrary element you can take these four independent bases and the coefficients which you can write on an arbitrary element is a complex coefficient which means it has real and imaginary. Okay. So, that is why I am saying that the corresponding vector space of these linear operators for the GL 2 C is 4 dimensional complex vector space or 8 dimensional real vectors. Okay. It is equivalent to 4 dimensional complex numbers will have real component and an imaginary component. There are four bases which is required to span the elements of G L 2 C. G for general, L for linear, 2 to denote 2 cross 2 matrices and C to denote the entries of the matrices can be complex. Okay. 
So, if you want to say what is it in the notation of real notation, I will write E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4. On top of it, I will write another 4 where 1 is replaced by i. Okay. Using those 8 matrices, I can generate any arbitrary general linear 2 cross 2 matrices with complex entries. Okay. So, in that sense, it is a 4 dimensional complex vector space. Then I went on to saying that I wanted to look at subalgebras of these 2 cross 2 matrices with complex entries. One subalgebra which I could look, I am not given why I am looking at traceless Hermitian. Suppose I look at traceless Hermitian matrices, for example, suppose I want to write down a matrix which is a 2 cross 2 matrix, tracelessness will force you that this has to be opposite to this. Hermitian will force the diagonal elements to be real right? and off diagonal elements should be complex conjugates of each other. Okay. So, essentially you have only 3 independent possibilities here. Earlier you had 4 independent possibilities because there was no restriction, but once I put a restriction you do see that I have to write only 3 independent bases. Clear? I cannot do anything more than that. So, this essentially tells me that S L 2 C, this is what we call it as a S L 2 C algebra or the elements of the S L 2 C algebra involves set of 2 cross 2 traceless Hermitian matrices. And these matrices, the number of independent bases you can have is a three dimensional complex vector space because you can still put complex coefficients. Okay. On top of it, I want to see the subalgebra of these SL2Cs. Okay. So, SL2Cs. So, you can write generators are your poly matrices yeah which other two yeah with an i factor yeah z is complex so it has two more non trivial entries in it that is the meaning of it. Okay. A is real, Z is complex. After you write any arbitrary element will be a linear combination of the basis states which have complex coefficients. You understand? So, that is why it will become either 6 real dimensional vector space or it will be a 3 complex dimensional vector space. Is that clear? So, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, did I make a mistake on this I? Is that right or 0 minus i, i 0? 1 minus i, right? Okay. So, this is one set of generators, all of them are traceless and Hermitian, right? And then, as I said, that it will be you can also write S1, which is i times sigma 1. S 2 which is i times sigma 2 and S 3 which is i times sigma 3. Okay. So, it is 6 real dimensional vector space. Okay. What I mean by that is any 2 cross 2 matrix which belongs to S L 2 C, we should be able to rewrite it as 1 to 3, some complex coefficients okay, of these objects, okay, which I can call it as sigma 1 plus S 1 kind of sigma i plus S i.
clear? So, this will be a you can show that these will again be these are Hermitian and traceless any linear combination with coefficients will also make it Hermitian and traceless. So, it is not a problem. Okay. Now, you look at a sub algebra of this coefficient will be once I write it as uh, this and this. Okay, so, I should be little careful here this plus sign is confusing. So, let me write it like this. So, it is coefficient c i. So, let me write 1 to 6 okay, c i times these generators. Let me call them to be what is the best notation I can use. Let me call them as generators. as uh, g i let us say all the 6 r. So, it is c i times g i. Okay. Then you can keep c i to be real. This is probably a better notation adding those two may not be a right thing with the common coefficient is not right. Okay. It is a 6 real dimensional. So, these coefficients are real now 6 real dimensional vector space. So, these 6 are the ones which is going to generate for you the algebra of S L 2 C. Okay. Clear? So, the algebra of this S L 2 C involves sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, you have S 1, S 2, S 3 and which one is a sub algebra? Both of them are sub algebras of it, you agree? Sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 it closes amongst itself right. Sigma 1, sigma 2 is i sigma 3. So, this is a definitely a sub algebra. Okay. It does not mix these two. So, it is definitely a sub algebra and you can look at elements generated using the sub algebra. So, those are what I call it as uh, elements which let me call it as some h which is 2 cross 2 will be summation over a i sigma i. Okay. So, these are arbitrary elements involving only the subset of those Lie algebra elements of S L 2 C and they will generate for me your familiar angular momentum which you have studied which is going to give you an element of a Lie algebra which I am going to denote it as small s small u under 2. So, any element of this Lie algebra which is a linear combination of sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 will be traceless, will be Hermitian okay. and why we had introduced a u will be visible when I do the group elements. Okay. So, we will see why the u has been introduced here. In the earlier case, I passingly said that tracelessness means determinant of the corresponding group element will be 1. Okay. So, I said that this is Lie algebra. If you go to a group which is S L 2 C, this will be an exponential of i okay. any of these or linear combinations of them if there are 6 generators then you will have 6 real parameters. So, you can write it as summation over j, a j times uh, all these g i, g j's, g j's is what I am calling it here. So, this will be the element of the group which is obtained by exponentiating the generators of the Lie, Lie group which are going to determine your Lie algebra and this element 
must have determinant to be this has to be plus 1 that is the meaning of saying it is special linear group okay. that is the important requirement. And once I put that condition on the determinant of an exponential okay, try to think of it as matrix representations determinant when you do a diagonalization Okay. If you do a diagonalization of this matrix, so let us take a 2 cross 2 matrix, let us take one element in the Lie algebra as 2 cross 2 matrix, only thing what we remember is that it should be traceless right and z star and z. This is an element of Lie algebra SL 2 C. You agree? Now, I want to exponentiate this, let us take one element, I am just taking an exponential of that and I want to say that this is an element of the group SL 2 C. Okay. Suppose I do a diagonalization here, I find a matrix A e to the i x a gives me a diagonal matrix. So, let me call it as e to the i lambda 1, e to the i lambda 2, right, A inverse. I can always do this on a given matrix. If I take the determinant of this, determinant of this, what does this mean? This is e to the power of i trace of lambda 1 0 0 lambda 2, you all agree? This expression is the same as that expression. Okay. So, what I have tried to show is that the determinant of the matrix, if it belongs to SL 2 C, the determinant of this has to be 1. Okay. So, this belonging to SL 2 C means that the determinant has to be plus 1. What does that reflect on the e to the i x? It has to be traceless. So, that is why automatically they put in a small letter s and said I am looking at traceless matrices. Okay. So, this is the implication between the path from the Lie algebra to the Lie group, the exponential map which I am doing and this uh, clearly shows that this implies trace of x because you can map this e to the i x. right? trace of x is equal to 0. Yeah. Is this clear? Okay. So, now the additional thing is suppose I want to look at unitary groups S u 2, what do I mean by S u 2? So, let us now take this this one the corresponding element of this e to the i h will belong to S u 2, clear. Now, whatever I said here tracelessness condition will be satisfied again, h should be traceless because the S denotes determinant has to be plus 1. Okay. On top of it, u denotes what? Just like in rotation orthogonality relation, now u denotes unitarity. So, I have to make sure that e to the i h 
e to the i h dagger should be equal to identity. That is unitary, unitary matrices must satisfy Is that clear? Fine. So, now you can because these two are same elements in the exponential, you can add them. So, e to the i h dagger i will become minus i. Okay. So, minus i h dagger has to be equal to 1. What does that tell you? H has to be this implies H should be H dagger that is Hermitian. Okay. So, I have just driven you through some complex path starting with arbitrary linear 2 cross 2 matrices with complex entries. I tried to say what are the basis states which forms a vector space on which you can write a Lie algebra. Then I said sub algebras with determinant plus 1 will sit inside this general linear algebras and you can exponentiate these elements and if you impose that determinant is plus 1 then you can say that the Lie algebra elements have to be traceless. And then we also saw that from the generators of SL 2 C, you saw that you also have a sub algebra and you can generate the corresponding Lie algebra for that sub algebra which is denoted as S u 2. Why it is u is by exponentiating it and seeing it as a group special unitary group involving 2 cross 2 matrices which is determinant plus 1 and it should be unitary. Just given a unitary matrix to you with determinant plus 1, how many independent parameters you have? Given a 2 cross 2 matrices, you have 4 complex entries okay. and then you have to try and see putting a determinant condition and unitarity condition just like we did it for orthogonal groups, you should do it for even for unitary groups. If you do that you will find that there are only 3 independent parameters for S u 2, is that right? Clear? Traceless even in the generator language you can see. You do not need to see in the group elements, group elements also you can do 2 cross 2 matrices, there are 4 complex elements, determinant plus 1 is one constraint, unitarity is another constraint. Okay. So, unitarity will have off diagonal, diagonal everything and then the determinant will be one more constraint. Okay. So, you can check that out and see that the number of parameters is 3 for S u 2. Yeah. Special unitary uh, group. S l we do not need Hermitian condition, we do not need it, but uh, if I want to look at S u 2 as a sub algebra there, I am just trying to look at if you take a sub algebra then some of the properties have to be continued. So, in that sense here this turns out to be a Hermitian. I do not have a reason why it should be Hermitian for S l in general only determinant has to be plus 1 or in the algebra it should be traceless. Yeah. What is S 3? Yeah, so, these are uh, in the real direction ways of writing it. If I do not put this in, I will take these 3 only and take the coefficients to be complex. You understand what I am saying? If I take it to be real, 
then you see it to be anti Hermitian I agree with you, but this equivalent statement between complex vector space and real vector space is if it is an n dimensional complex vector space it is two n dimensional. So, if you put the i factor automatically it becomes anti Hermitian I agree with you, yeah, but you start with only saying I am looking at a complex vector space and then these are the three generators with complex coefficients. Okay. In that sense it will be even their coefficients can be uh, uh, complex right. So, then uh, Hermitian, Hermitian things you need to worry about it I agree. The generators are uh, traceless and uh, Hermitian that is all I can say. Okay. So, I do not think I need to put in the condition of Hermitian for the S L groups, but when I come to S U groups Hermitian comes up naturally. Is that clear? Yeah, any other question? Yeah, that is a good point. S L groups you only want determinant to be plus 1, there is no Hermitian requirement, but S U because of the unitarity you do see that you get that h and h, h should be equal to h dagger, where h's are the generators of the Lie algebra. So, are you all thinking the fact now what is Lie algebra, what is Lie group? Elements of Lie group are exponentiating elements of the Lie algebra and the Lie algebra elements if you take any two elements you do a commutator, you have to get a linear combination which satisfies those same properties okay. that is why it forms that Lie algebra. Is that clear? I have given you a couple of examples just to clarify things for you. Huh. Huh? S once I put a letter S for the Lie algebra it is traceless which is equivalent to the group capital S to be determinant to be plus 1 that step is what I have shown you here that you can always diagonalize a matrix when you diagonalize this one will have eigenvalues because these elements are e to the i x I have written e to the i lambda 1 and e to the i lambda 2 are the two eigenvalues. So, determinant of this can be also written as e to the power of i. So, determinant is e to the i lambda 1 into e to the i lambda 2 if you take a trace it is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 it is e to the i lambda 1 into e to the i lambda 2. Huh. Yeah, S O will also be some sub, sub algebra of this S L. Yeah, so, only thing is there it is orthogonality conditions and the coefficients have to be real and there will be some sub algebra of these S L groups. So, there you have to look at 3 cross 3 matrices even though I have considered 2 cross 2 you can do this for GL and C I will, I will just mention those notation. Okay.